All right, everybody. Buyer's Agent Blueprint Workshop 2.0. Let's get to it. Ah, the processes and methods of moving a new lead to a signed client that I'm going to show you today is what's moved me into a top 1% buyer's agent here in San Diego, California. I would argue probably the toughest market here in the United States. Um, but let me show you how this works. Um, so what are you going to get out of here? At the end of the day, you're going to walk away with understanding the NAR settlement, how to protect your income. I've actually figured out how to grow my income through this, making more money now after August 17th. Uh, pain problems and value proposition framework, how to use that to offer value, how to offer and pitch value for a consultation, for a buyer consultation. All the steps of the buyer consultation, A to Z, and then how to get a signed buyer broker agreement every time. So that's what we're going to go through. Those of you that make it all the way to the end, I do have extra bonus gifts for you. So make sure you stay to the end. All right, uh, a little bit about me. My name is Ryan Real. live in San Diego, California, a devoted Christian, top 1% buyer's agent here in San Diego. Been in that spot for uh, three years now at this point. Um, senior partner with the Wanabo Real Estate Group. We're a top 10 team throughout San Diego County. Uh, last couple of years, 18 plus million in annual production. At this point, we've blown that away. I think we're well over 21 million at this point. Um, really good at selling things and teaching people how to do that. Um, I've been getting buyer broker agreements from the first day that I've been in the business. Um, that's been the standard where I've worked. Um, and so just I've been doing this for a while. So I want to share this with you guys. Um, so why are we here today? National Association of Realtors, they settled and their rules have changed. So we're going to make sure you guys understand what that is. Um, Buyer agents commissions can no longer be advertised in the MLS. That's the biggest change that is driving all of the other changes. Um, that data from August 17th forward is gone. It will never be there again. We actually can't even go backwards and see what it was prior to that at this point. That data is now gone. We do have all of the historical data, which I will share with you towards the end of this, so you guys have it at least for San Diego. Um, the commissions can be advertised everywhere else. It can be on your side. It can be on a broker's side. It can be talked about on a phone call. You can put a sign in a listing and say, seller is offering 2%, whatever it is. We just can't put it in the MLS. Um, your paycheck is going to be negotiated with every single buyer that you work with. Um, if you have already experienced this, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'm going to show you how to protect your income. There are two negotiation periods that we are looking at when it comes to negotiating your commissions, you're going to have to do it with the, the buyers when you're sitting down and interviewing for the job. And then there is a very real possibility that you're going to have to negotiate that again with, you're going to have to negotiate again with the seller and the listing agent. And that could again come back to you having to go back to your client and they could want to renegotiate it a third time. So let's make sure we nail this and we don't end up with stuff all over the place. Uncertainty kills everything. It kills buyers' motivation to buy. It kills your ability or desire to want to do work. So let's just take that out of the equation here. Um, so the days of throwing a buyer in the car and showing them a home is over, right? The agents that that's their business model, they will not be with us by probably the middle of the summer of 2025. And that's okay. Um, there's a lot of other industries that need people to work in them. Um, so buyers are now going to have to sit down and interview an agent. They're going to have to sign a buyer broker agreement in order to see a home unless it's at an open house. If they want to write an offer, they have to sign an agreement to work with somebody. They can't get away from that at this point. As agents, we're going to have to be able to sit down and offer value to them. We're going to have to offer value to them to even get them to sit down with us. And from there, you're going to have to sit down and deliver that value to them and differentiate yourself from all the other agents in order to be hired. If you're an agent that works predominantly with sphere of influence and that's your thing, then maybe, maybe you get away without having to know a bunch of this stuff. But if you are not that agent, then what you're running into is you're going to have to be able to sit down and deliver value to them in a fashion that they're going to want to hire you. All right. And so the value that you offer is going to be directly related to the commission amount that you're going to receive. All right. So let's talk about buyer broker agreements real quick. All right. There's three different types of them. This is not a hard part of this conversation at all. There's the exclusive agreement. 
right? The gold standard of this is you have an exclusive buyer broker agreement where a buyer is agreeing to work with you for any home that you want to buy. That's what we need to be aiming at. Anything short of that, you got to make sure the juice is worth the squeeze. The next type of not of exclusive agreement, which some people will call a non-exclusive agreement, it's kind of some wordplay here, is that it's exclusive to one home only, which also some people are saying, I will sign an agreement with you to see one home, but it is not exclusive to all of the other homes. Kind of a wordplay here. If you are going to show a home and you do not have an agreement in place with them that they are going to use you to buy that home, you are a moron. I cannot be any nicer. I than that. I could be a lot meaner than that. I come up with a lot more colorful words, but you are a moron if you are going out and showing somebody home that you don't have an agreement in place. If you're going to be a showing agent, I could use one. Let me know. I'm hiring, right? But then you can come out and you can show people homes and I don't have to, and then they're going to use me to buy the house. It doesn't make any sense. Don't do that, right? That's kind of what this touring agreement is. Um, I think these pretty much have died away at this point. Zillow tried to come up with this to say, you can sign this agreement and we'll show you a whole bunch of homes and you don't have to commit to using us. Don't do that. Just please don't do that. You're going to be out of the business. All right. So exclusive agreement is the gold standard. Any property in an area, that's what we're aiming at. So how do we get to this? How do we get somebody to say, I will sign away my future ability to buy a house and I'm going to put all my eggs in your basket. So let's go through that. The first thing is we have to understand the life cycle of a buyer, right? We are going to have to meet somebody, meet a husband and wife, meet a, per, a, a guy, a gal, whatever, whoever, whatever it is that's wanting to buy. And you're going to meet them in an open house. You're going to meet them from an online lead. They're going to click on the website. You're going to meet them at the supermarket. It could be a referral from a friend. It could be whatever it is. You have to meet this person and go from, hi, my name is Ryan, it's nice to meet you, to let's sit down and have a conversation about exactly how I can solve your problems. And at the end of that conversation, I have to ask them to sign a buyer broker agreement that obligates them to work with me. That is the hardest part of real estate. Getting them to show up to the consultation is the hardest part. The second hardest part is delivering the value. And so we have to understand that there's a life cycle. We have to be able to meet someone where they are at. So let's start with this. This just comes down to categorizing leads. It, the system that I use, there's I have six different categories. There's a new lead. It means they just came into the system. My CRM literally keeps them there for about five seconds before it moves them directly to the qualify status. So a qualified lead, you can call this ABC, bronze, silver, gold, you can call it whatever the heck you want, right? Um, but you just need to come up with names. You need to come up with something that you understand what they are. So a qualify is a lead that has just come into the system. I haven't spoke with them. Nobody has spoken with them. I have no idea what the heck is going on with them other than they clicked a button, they came in the door of an open house. And what I need to be able to do is get in touch with them on the phone you can do this in person at an open house. If you get to a skill set where you can meet someone in an open house, have enough of a conversation, get them to agree to a buyer consultation later that day, the next day, Monday, whatever that is, and get them to show up without ever having to talk to them on the phone, that is stellar. Right? That is stellar. It's doable, very doable, but that requires a high level of skill set. So what that means is you're more than likely going to have to call them and get them on the phone. And after you have them on the phone, you're going to have to deliver enough value to them that they're going to want to sit down with you. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we are trying to figure out how to do. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So during this, the qualify stage, they're there for 10 to 14 days. That's it, right? If I can't get in touch with them after 14 days, and you could argue 17, I can live with that, whatever. But at the end of this period, they are out of the qualify stage. They're moved to another stage based off of whatever conversation you had at an open house, on the phone, text message, email, whatever it is. But during this 10 to 14 days, right, this is the 10 days of pain for them, right? They're going to get 10 plus phone calls, five plus text messages, and five plus emails. You need to reach out to them and connect with them because here's the thing. Let's say that everybody on this workshop lives in San Diego and you all, we all are working in the same area, right? And all of us each have an open house on Saturday from 12 to 3. And one set of buyers goes to all of our open houses. 
That means every single one of us is going to have an opportunity to follow up with them. If you're the agent who's going, oh my God, I would never call them 10 times. That is so rude. Oh, five text messages. What? If that, that can be you and that's okay because you'll call them one or two times and maybe send them a text and like, hey, don't want to bother you. Like that can be your approach to this, but I'm calling them, texting them, emailing them. The probability of me getting in touch with them is mathematically better than yours is. And guess what? All the other agents on here are going to have something between, I don't feel like following up with somebody because I just don't do that, all the way up to maybe even going harder in the paint than I'm going with that. How many opportunities do you want to have to get in touch with somebody? There is data out there that shows it takes seven phone calls, seven attempted phone calls to get somebody on the phone. If you're giving up after two, what results are we expecting? All right, so keep that in mind. All right, the next category is the hot category. These are people that are ready to buy in the next 30, 60, 90 days. These people are ready to roll. They have a pre-approval letter. They're out looking at homes. They probably have written offers if they found one they like. These are your most valuable leads, right? The most valuable category overall would be under contract, right? Those are people you've already met with. They've already signed the agreement with you. Those are, that's, those are your most valuable people. These are your most valuable leads, these, this is your fastest pathway to a paycheck. If you're going to an open house, you're going to spend two, three, four hours, however many it is you do in an open house on a Saturday or on a Sunday, away from your family, away from, from friends, away from fun, away from relaxation, and you're working, you are looking for somebody in that's going to fit into this category where you can meet them, you can connect with them, you can deliver value to them, you can set an appointment, you can sign them and help them buy a house in the next 30, 60, 90 days. These, this is the gold mine. These people we are contacting one to two times a week by phone. There is intention behind what we're calling. Not just calling, hey, want to check in on how's your own third going? That's not what we're calling for. Right? We're calling with a specific intention. From here, warm is the next category. These are people that are three to six months out. Right? These people are getting a call twice a month, every two weeks. They're going to get a phone call with intention. From there, we have the watch category, six to 12 months out. These people are getting a call once a month, once every four weeks, however you want to chop that up. The last category is the archive category. These are people that are 12 plus months out. If this is an online lead, this is somebody who is extremely early in the research phase. They're a year plus away, but they're like, hey, um, I want more info on this house. And somehow I ended up on your website and I have to fill out this form in order to get behind that thing to look at the house. So here's my name and my info, and I want to look at the house. They're nowhere close to buying. They're 12 plus months away from buying. Super early research phase buyer. This could be somebody you meet at an open house who says, oh yeah, we're the neighbors. We live four doors down and we bought six years ago. Cool, you're a seller lead. You've owned for six years. Chances are within the next four, mathematically speaking, you're probably moving. So I'm going to follow up with you once a quarter. Right now, here is why this is important. We have to meet the, the leads where they are at. If I have a lead that is a hot lead, ready to buy in the next 30, 60, 90 days, and I contact them as if they are a watch lead, I'm calling them once a month. I'm either going to get really lucky and I timed it perfectly and they answered like, oh my gosh, yes, we just saw one, two, three Apple Street online. We want to go see it. Like, oh, great. I'm going to show it to you. And you got lucky. Chances are, if you call them once every four weeks, once a month, and they're ready to buy in the next 30, 60, 90 days, 30 days is a month, they've already, oh, this, the Ryan never followed up with the Ryan, we never heard from you, like we heard from this other agent, and he seemed, he seems really good, and we're, we're signed with him, uh, but, but we had such a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan, like we just, we already signed, like thanks for trying, if, if it doesn't work out, we'll call you, right, you don't want that, conversely, if you have an archive lead, Let's actually make that better. Let's say if you have a watch lead, someone's like, hey, look, I can't buy for at least six months. We need to wait until the end of the summer when we can buy a new house in a new school district. And you start calling that guy as if he's ready to buy in the next 30, 60, 90 days. If you're calling this guy two times a week, how many times is it going to take for him to finally go either block or go, dude, stop calling me. We're not buying for six more months. And you're done. So we have to have these guys categorized correctly. This is the first part of this. Prospecting and lead follow-up. 
you got to meet them where they're at with your questions, with your approach and your frequency of contact. That's what we just covered, the frequency of contact. But the questions, this is where people either are good or they're not. All right, but how are we going to get a hold of them? The phone call is the gold standard. It's very simple. Text message, email, social media, recorded video. Record a video on your phone and send it to them. Send it to them by text. Send it to them by email. Use a service like Dub or BombBomb or Loom, record a video, send them the link to the video, send it, get it to them. It's the best of both worlds. They get to see what you look like, they get to hear your voice, they get the message, and they're seeing your tonality, they're seeing your body language, they're seeing all of it, all right? Um, FaceTime, try it. If you don't believe me, try it. It's fun. Uh, people don't know what to do when <laughs> they get a FaceTime call for a random phone number they answer the phone give it a try and they're nice they're not rude when they actually have to look at somebody um whatsapp if you don't have that download the app put your contact records from the phone into there you'll be amazed at who you find in there this is an everywhere but the united states app right this is texting phone calls it's an international thing so if you are in an area where you have people who have moved from another country to here they i guarantee you have a WhatsApp with family and friends overseas, whether it be they moved here for work, whether they're going to college, whether they went to college, now they're working here, whatever it is, great resource if you want to pull that up. All right, so here's the money maker. Take a screenshot of this. These, this is the, these are the three things you have to understand as a buyer's agent. You have to understand and master how these three work together. Pain points, problems, solutions. If you got all three of these, you're going to get a buyer broker agreement. So let's go into this. Your paycheck is directly related to the quality of the questions that you ask and the value you deliver. If you ask crappy questions and you don't deliver value, you're going to have no clients and you're not going to get paid a lot. If you ask crappy questions, but you can somehow deliver enough value, you're going to not have a very big paycheck. If you ask great questions, but you deliver crappy value, you're going to have a crappy paycheck, right? So we don't want crappy paychecks. We want big paychecks. So I'm going to tell you how this all works. I'm going to tell you this in the context of the story. This is probably a couple months old at this point. So a lead came in to me from realtor.com. I was finishing up prospecting, um, had like two phone calls left on the auto dialer. And so like, I'll call them once I'm done, right? So lead came in at 10 o'clock on a Monday. I called him at like 10.08, 10.09, something like that. All right. What happened was the wife answers the phone. Hey, this is Ryan with BXP Realty. Uh, Realtor.com just sent me your contact info, info. They said you were looking at 123 Apple Street here in Carmel Valley. Um, tell me more about what you're looking to do. Something like that. Her answer was, um, thank you for calling. The other agent already called us and we're all set. We have an appointment to see the house. Not what you're wanting to hear. That is not, that's not the gold standard of the start of a phone call. Right. So at that point, right, if we end up in that situation, we are clawing and scratching and digging to get any sort of finger hold, foot hold, toe hold, foot in the door, ask another question. You're renting their time one question at a time now. And so what I said to her was something to the effect of, Oh, that's interesting. Realtor.com normally only sends the leads here in Carmel Valley to us. We've been the top agent team for the last 10 years. Is that important to you? Caught her attention. It caught her attention. All right. And so with this, your goal is to have a six minute phone call. Two minutes is the minimum length of a phone call for it to count as a conversation. But your goal is to, in six minutes to get all of the key pieces of intel you need. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by asking questions. Open-ended questions means they can't answer it with one word. They have to actually put together a thought and share information. Leading questions. You're leading them down a road. You're leading them down a road to get more information. You're leading them down a road to see what your point is. Lagging questions. Following up. Digging more deeply. And then clarifying questions. Right? Like, what, what exactly the heck does that mean? All right? And so with this... I got her to stay on the phone and her, her next question was, okay, well, I'm sorry. What's your name and who are you with? My name is Ryan Real. I'm with the, with the XP Realty here in Carmel Valley. Okay. And uh, okay. And I said, well, is it, is it important to you to work with? Cause I know that once I asked that question, she stopped 
right? So I had her, I had her attention. Is it important to you to be working with the top agent team here in Carmel Valley? Well, what, is, what does that mean? What do, you, what do you mean? Well, we've been the top team here for 10 years. We're area experts. And I kept digging into it. So I got about 30 to 60 seconds into this phone call, probably about 60 seconds in. And she said to me, hang on a second. She puts me on speakerphone and says, okay, my husband's here with me. We'll both talk to you. All right. So I went from, we have an appointment. Thank you. We're good to I asked enough questions to get her to stop, to have a short conversation with me and then put her husband on the phone, right? So we're digging into what's going on with them, right? And so the key pieces of intel I'm wanting, timeline, do they rent or do they own? What pain points are they having? And what are their wants, needs, hopes, and dreams? There are three other key pieces of intel. We don't have time to go into those today, right? And so through this conversation, I'm trying to figure out when do you guys want to be into a new home? Do you guys rent or do you own? Like what's going on with your current situation and what pain points are you having? What's the pain? All right. And so what I was able to learn was they lived in Las Vegas and they wanted to move to San Diego to be closer to family, closer to their kids. I learned that they didn't know anything about San Diego other than Carmel Valley was a nice area. I learned that they wanted to have a new construction home, a modern looking home. All right, so with this, as I'm asking questions, I'm being told all about the pain points that, that they have. The husband and the wife are telling me, and now normally, so when we get to kind of the consult thing here, normally you get one person on the phone. Normally that would be if I called the wife, I'm talking to her only. I'm never gonna talk to the husband unless I'm able to set up a consultation. If I get the husband on the phone, I'm talking to him, not going to get to talk to the wife, right? This, I got very lucky in this situation where I had both of them on the phone, right? Normally you only get one. So I want you to keep that in mind. But pain points are telling me, this is what we're feeling. This is painful. This is really unhappy. I'm very emotionally upset about this. That's what pain is, right? It's a symptom though of a larger problem. I'm going to hear their pain all day long, but what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to determine what's the problem that's causing that pain. I need to be able to ask enough questions and dig deep enough about the pain they're telling me about to determine what the problem is and either the scope or the magnitude of it. So with this, when I can figure out what their problem is, I can offer them a value proposition. Value proposition is a statement or an offer that clearly explains the unique benefits and value that a service offers to its customers. It highlights how a service method or process solves a problem or improves a situation and why it stands out from the competition. Why should they hire me instead of this other agent? So as I'm going through this, i am learned very quickly, they don't have a clue about San Diego, they need to have an agent who understands the Carmel Valley area. They don't understand the market. They don't understand what it takes to win between three and $4 million. That was their price point. They need someone who has an understanding of the communities. There's 133 communities in Carmel Valley. Five of them have the homes that they were looking at. Having the ability to find off-market properties, having relationships with the other top agents that sell the most number of homes in those specific five communities. I was able to determine the problem they had was they didn't know the area. They didn't have an agent that knew what they were doing at all. And they needed to come down that next weekend. So this was on a Monday. They were coming into town on Friday and they needed to see houses. They found one on Zillow or Rip, realtor.com and they needed someone to show them homes and to be able to help them buy one. Through all of that, the value propositions I was able to come up with in my mind is somebody who understands the community, somebody who understands the market, somebody who has strategies to win in this market, somebody who knows all the other top agents in the market and has a great reputation. And that will carry the day if everything else is even close to equal with a counter offer. How to find off market properties, how to make the most out of their time. All of those were value propositions that I was able to come up with to solve their problems 
which would alleviate their pain. So as I'm going through this conversation, it becomes very clear that this is what this is to me. And so what I did is I had to come up with a pitch. How do I ask for the business, right? Because remember, they already said, hey, this other agent called and she's already set up an appointment for us. Cool. Sounds good. Right? Kept asking questions. Never even acknowledged it. Didn't even ask who. I did ask who the other agent's name was. I don't remember what, what they said her name was. Okay. But here's the pitch framework. I'm going to talk about what other agents do and the pain and the problems that that creates. I'm going to tell them what my solution to this is, and I'm going to do it in the context of a story. So here's a, a general pitch that I used with her. I said, hey, John and Susie, listen, a lot of buyers that come from out of town, they inherit, agent, inherit agents by clicking a button on one of those websites, and they end up kind of inheriting the first person they talk to. That person might not even work that much in the area. They might not have a very good understanding of the area or the market. They might not have a very good understanding about the specific type of house you're looking for and where to even find those because they're going to be using realtor.com also. They're not going to have any relationships with existing agents or ability to find you an off-market property, let alone negotiate in what is probably one of the most highly sought after areas here in San Diego. You know, I had some clients, um, Larry and, and Jamie, who a few months ago had come to me. They actually lived here. They, they weren't out of town like you guys are, so they had one step better. Um, they had some very specific criteria for a house, much like what you did. And they had no idea how to go about finding it. And they just saw that it was an extremely competitive market. What I was able to do was sit down with them and break down the different specific communities that had a high density of homes that were matching what they wanted and show them very clearly the 15 different methods we have of finding homes. Only one of those methods is looking at everything that's publicly available on the MLS. We were able to sit down and explain that to them. We agreed to work together. We narrowed it down to three specific communities and then further narrowed it down to one part of one community. And I was able to find them a house before before it actually came on the market, they knew it was coming in that area because of existing relationships I had with that agent. We ultimately beat out three other offers and paid $20,000 less than the other highest offer at the end. They were able to get their offer accepted and they're now living in the specific dream home that they were looking for. Would you find value out of sitting down and going over the methods and the strategies that I used to do that for them? That's the basic pitch. Their answer was the husband. I don't think I even got the whole thing out of my mouth, but her husband was like, yes, yes, yes. We would find a lot of value out of that. Awesome. Would you guys feel more comfortable meeting on Zoom on Wednesday? Or would you prefer to meet on Friday morning when you get into town? I gave them that option. They both immediately said Wednesday, Wednesday. We definitely need this information. Okay, cool. Looked at my calendar. I said, I think I have I have a spot available at, at 1.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday. Would that work for you? They look, yes, we will make that work. Awesome. Sounds good. Asked a few more questions, clarifying questions, dug a little deeper, finished up asking all the, the key pieces of intel I needed, and uh, was getting ready to you know, wrap up the phone call, but already set the appointment, was getting ready to wrap up the phone call when the wife says, hey, Ryan. Um, listen, are you available on Friday to show us houses? Um, let me look at my schedule. Look at my schedule. Yes, I'm free to show three and four million dollar homes in the afternoon. That's not a problem. Um, I look at my schedule. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We can. Uh, I can move up something around. And we can make that work. What time did you want to start? You know what? Listen, we're going to call that other agent. We're going to cancel the showing. We'll have you show us the home at 10 o'clock. Sounds good. Let me look and find some other homes for us to look at. We'll meet on Wednesday on Zoom, finished up the phone call. So I went from, thank you, the other agent set, a, set up a showing. We're all good. Thank you. Normally, the phone is then hung up on you. She didn't hang up. I threw something at her. It caught her attention. It kept her on the phone. I kept renting her time, one question at a time, to a point where the husband got on the phone. Now I'm talking to both of them, more questions, more digging, more probing, more clarifying, more questions. What's the pain? What pain am I hearing from them? What Problem is creating that pain, and how can I solve that problem? Made the pitch, set the appointment.
Not bad so far. So you guys tell me, are you feeling overwhelmed? It's a lot of stuff right there. Because here's the thing. You have to be able to ask the right questions to figure out what the pain is. And then while you're talking to them on the phone, you got to be able to determine what's the problem that's creating this pain. And then you got to dig more into the problem. While you're doing all of this, you're going to have to figure out what's my solution? What's the value? Did you guys know that there's 30 plus different value propositions for buyers that you could offer to them? It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. This is only the first step of three, because now you need to execute the other two to get a signed client. So let's get to those. Just to clarify something, to fully dive into all the stuff that I just covered with you guys, that's over nine hours worth of coaching. Over nine hours worth of instruction. We covered it in 30 minutes, right? Giving you guys an outline, giving you guys the playbook, right? But now you have to have the specific place to call. All right, so let's get to part two, buyer consultation. All right, so as soon as I got off the phone with them, there were key steps that I needed to execute on. These steps are designed to dramatically increase the probability that the lead's going to show up and the chances of success. This is a job interview, a $25,000 job interview for a $1 million buyer. That's 2.5% of a $1 million purchase. I'm talking about somebody who was between three and $4 million. So that's between a seventy-five dollars to $100,000 commission. Right? That's what I was able to set an appointment for. There's immediate actions. There's actions within 24 to 48 hours, and then there's actions on the day of. So let's dig into these. Let's make sure you guys know what these are. The immediate action steps, calendar invite, 12% increase in show up rate. Simple calendar invite. A recap email with a high note link and a custom video in it. So this is a video recap email. Hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you on this day at this time at this location. We're going to talk about A, B, and C. Here below is a link to some buyer resources. Make sure you take a look at that. It's super important. It'll save us a ton of time when we meet. Inside there is a high note link. They'll click on the high note link. It'll take them to a high note presentation. It has all the videos, all the PDFs, everything I want them to watch before they show up. And I can see if they're watching it. Custom video, again, they're seeing me. They're hearing me. They're getting the message. They're getting the words. They're just coming out of my mouth. And they're getting my tonality and body language. The last part of this is update the notes in the CRM. I set the appointment on Monday. The appointment was on Wednesday, right? High probability I'm going to remember the majority of that. But if I had set it for Friday, I have three and a half, four days go by. Am I going to remember everything that I talked with about them, talked with them about? No, that's why I put it in the notes. 24 hours before the consultation, I'm going to call them. I tried calling them got a hold of them, had this general conversation. I affirmed the appointment, the time, the location, and how much time we were going to have and that they were both going to be there. So yes, Wednesday, 1.30 in the afternoon on Zoom, we have an hour or more. We need to understand what you're talking about, and we will both be there. Awesome. Outstanding. I confirmed what we were talking about. We're going to talk about A, B, C, and D. Is there anything new that you want to talk about? Do you have any other questions you're going to know I, we, that you know I you know that you want me to answer? Are there any other topics you thought of? I want to know everything. Confirm anything that I did not, any assumptions that I made, dig deeper where I needed to, didn't need to, thankfully. And then if you haven't already, are you talking to other agents? Who are you talking to? If you've already had that conversation in the first round, which you should have, you now can go back for more information. Have you met with any of them? Was there anything you liked during the presentation? Is there anything you didn't like during the presentation? What's most important to you with the agent you hire? Have you eliminated any of those agents? If you like what I have to show you to, tomorrow, are you in a position to agree to work with me? All questions to ask. That all happens 24 hours in advance. The day of the consultation. If you didn't get a hold of them the day before, go back to the slide and do that the morning of, right? Like really do your best to get it done 24 hours in advance.
But if I have got a hold of them, I'm going to send them a simple text message. Hey, look forward to seeing you guys today at 1.30 in the afternoon. We're meeting on Zoom. Here's the link. If I'm meeting in person, we're meeting at 1.30. Here's the address. Come in the main doors. Go to the right. First door on the left. Whatever it is. Very simple. That's all your pre-consultation stuff. It is a job interview. It is a job interview. $1 million buyer, $25,000. So during the consultation, we have rapport and framing, we have value propositions, we ask for the business, we have objections, and we have the paperwork. That's it. But getting them to show up to this is the hardest thing to do in real estate. This is the second hardest thing. So let's talk about building rapport. You're on Zoom, you're sitting across the table from them, you're sitting at Starbucks, whatever it is. Where do you guys live now? Hey, what part of Vegas do you live in? Where are you guys from? What do you guys do for a living? Now, keep this in mind. I had both of them on the phone. So I had when I had that initial conversation, I got the answers from both of them. But let's say I had only spoken with the wife and she and now her husband show up. Hopefully I know what she does for a living, but now I'm going to ask the husband, hey, what, what do you do for work? Where are you from? Maybe they're not from the same place. What's your reason for moving? When do you want to be into a new house? Why is it important to be into a new house by then? What has to happen between now and then? All real estate related. But it's digging into also what's their motivation? What's their timeline? You're getting to ask the other partner these questions. This is the money maker right here. This is where we start to transition from rapport building into the framing part of this. How has this process been so far? Simple question. Ask one person, how has this process been so far? Listen to what he or she says. Then literally turn and look at the other person and go, How's this process? How do you think the process has been so far? You probably are going to get answers that are similar, but not exactly the same. You have to be able to take in the information from both parties. You also are trying to figure out who is the decision maker in this process. Normally with a married couple, one of the two of them is the actual decision maker. All right. So with this, we go into framing. This is an essential part of the consultation. How much time do we have today? I've had one person said, you got 10 minutes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, you got 10 minutes. My wife is making me be here. I look at her and she's like, oh, I want you. we're here. And I'm like, sweet. We didn't build any rapport. We went straight into it. Bam, right there. Highest value thing that I knew of. Most people are going to tell you a half hour, an hour, as much time as you want. I have to go pick up my kids at four, whatever it is. But you need to know that, right? Because if they drop, well, hey, actually, we only got like 30 minutes. Like, oh, geez, we need to. We need to get to this. Reaffirm the talking points, the reasons why you met. You're going to say that to the person that you spoke to on the phone. You're watching for the reaction of the other person. Because then, are there any other questions that you have? Turn to the other person. Are there any other questions that you have? Ask multiple times. Then you can go into the other agents. This is round three. Hey, when we talked on the phone... You told me you were interviewing two other agents. Have you guys, how did you guys find those agents? If I talk to the wife, her answer might be, I don't know. There's two, there are two agents that have been like contacting us. You ask the husband, like, how did, how did you guys find the agents? Oh, um, one is my roommate from college and the other is a friend of another very good friend of mine. The other is my uncle. Two agents you found, huh? Like we got a relationship going on here. You got to figure this out. You're not always going to get the whole story from the first person you talk to. So then you're going to dig into the same type of questions. Have you interviewed any of them? How did those interviews go? Was there anything you liked? Was there anything you didn't like? Did you eliminate any of them? If you like what I have to show you today, are you in a position to agree to work together? You might want to know that. And then from there, you have to quickly mentally frame and prioritize all the value propositions. From there, we get straight to it. Roll right into the presentation. All right, so the presentation. 
deliver all the value, give them everything. They're never going to be able to do it on their own. It's not going to happen. They're never going to be able to relay enough of what you're telling them accurately to another agent that the other agent's going to be able to follow along with what they're saying. Oh, yes, expires and canceled. We do that too. Cool, because we explain a lot more about that. All right, are you going to be able to explain the other two or two minutes worth of explanation of that? Or are you just going to be remember it was expired in something? Listings that used to be on the market, I don't know, but can you find those? Yeah, absolutely, we can find those. Come on over here and work with me. That's what another agent's going to do. They're going to be, oh, yes, absolutely. They're expired, it's canceled. There's also some withdrawals. That we, they're not going to get that, all right? So here's the thing. Here are the two keys to this. As you are explaining the value, you need to confirm continually that they're understanding what you're saying. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? Right? Ask. No. No clue what you're talking about. Okay, hard stop. Go back. Figure this out. Yep, no problem. Do you guys have any questions so far? Nope. Yes, I have a question. What did this mean? Oh, this meant that. Okay, cool. Got it. Move on. If you go all the way through a seven-minute explanation of a value proposition, and they're like, yeah, so like when you first started talking, you used this word that I didn't understand, and what is that? And you're like, holy shit, that was at the beginning of this entire thing. Like, I'm going to have to go back and explain what that word means, and now i got to re-explain the whole thing, So because they probably stopped listening once they didn't understand what I was talking about. The other thing we need to do is lay and set hooks. You're confirming the value you're delivering as you go. Do you see value in that? Does that seem valuable to you? Do you think that would give you an advantage? Would you feel comfortable having that advantage? Get them to agree that they're understanding, they don't have any questions, and they see the value you are delivering. If you can do that, you will get to the end of the consultation and be able to ask for the business. And it is a seamless, like, yeah, understood everything you said, see the value. Yes, I want to work with you. It is that easy. This is an important piece. You always have to establish your value before ever talking about commissions or they will never see the value. How much is your commission? It's two and a half percent, but let's talk about the home buying process. Um, my colleague said that their agent did it for one and a half percent. Can you do it for one and a half? Well, let me show you why I'm worth two and a half. Um, can you do it for one and a half or not? Uh, and now you're in a really awkward position. You go and explain them all the value. They understand it. They don't have any questions about it. They see the value. They see the benefit. They see the reason to work with you. Would you rather have them see all of that and understand all that before you have the awkward, potentially awkward conversation of, can you take, can you give us 1% of your commission back? This also plays into the NAR settlement because the NAR settlement will lead to commissions. Save it for the end of the presentation. All right, from here, you ask for the business. You need to be very clear that you are asking them to work with you exclusively. Would you feel comfortable working together? Simplest question you can ask them. They say yes, shake their hand. Can't do it through Zoom, but say, yay. I'd shake your hand, but you're not here. Congratulations. Immediately go into, let's get to take care of the paperwork for the state. Very simple. If they say no, if they say, well, think about it, there is an objection coming. Whatever comes out of their mouth next is the objection that you're going to have to overcome. So objections and problems. Objections can be overcome, problems cannot. You need to determine, is this an objection or is this a problem? Problems you cannot solve for them. If they want to buy a $2 million house and have a $1 million budget, it's not happening. All right? Objections come from most likely an error in your presentation. You didn't explain something well enough. You did not explain the correct value. You didn't deliver the correct value. You didn't determine what the actual problem was. You kind of hit around the problem. If there's an objection, you have to ask clarifying questions. What does that look like to you? What does that mean to you? Why is that important to you? What should we do to fix this? What would you be more comfortable with? What if we yeah, go to it? All right, so from here, that wasn't too bad. That's pretty straightforward, right? You delivered the value. Right? You could screw up all the pre-consultation stuff. You could not send them a calendar invite. You could not follow up with them on the phone. You could not send them a text in the morning. You're still going to have a reasonable number of people show up. And then you sit down and you explain the value that you're bringing to the party. 
let's go ahead and get into part three, not part two, about the NAR changes in the buyer broker agreements. All right, the paperwork is the finish line, right? Football, you're at the one yard line, first and goal. You gotta score. Field goal won't win the game. You gotta score a touchdown. NAR settlement, buyer broker agreements, how commissions are gonna be paid. That is what you have to be able to explain to them. So let's go through this. I'm gonna show you how I would explain this. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, the NAR changes, they break down like this. First, any buyer has to have a signed buyer broker agreement in order to go see a home unless they go to an open house. If they're gonna write an offer on a home, they have to have that signed buyer broker agreement. That makes sense to you. Yes, okay, great. Um, question, uh, part number two, buyer side commissions are no longer advertised in the MLS. What that means to us functionally is every single house has a $0 commission until we write an offer. Does that make sense to you? What do you mean? They can't, it means it can't be advertised in the MLS. There's no contractual obligation. The commission, my commission is no longer negotiated for me by the listing agent. I have to negotiate a commission rate with you, and then I have to go ahead and negotiate that with the seller. Number three, okay, well, how are, how are the commissions being paid, right? That's their question. This is what they really care about right here. So the third huge simple is, hey, and then let's talk about how commissions are paid. And you roll right into this. There is absolutely no change in any way, shape, or form to the way the buyer's agent's commissions are being paid. That is the truth. It has always been the responsibility of the buyer to pay their agent. However, if somebody other than them makes the payment on their behalf, they are not obligated to pay it anymore. I don't get paid twice. I'm trying to figure out how, can't figure it out. I only get paid one time. If the seller pays, you don't have to pay me. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay, great. Here's the three ways. You ready? Way number one, buyer has to pay the full commission out of pocket. That happens about 1% of the time here in San Diego. That makes sense to you. Yes. Number two, seller pays part of it, buyer pays part of it. That happens about two, maybe 3% of the time here in San Diego. Does that make sense to you? Common question, what does a part of a commission mean? Anything under 2%. Okay, got it. What's your commission rate? We're going to get to that in a minute. The third way that this is paid, seller pays the entire commission. That happens about 95, 96% of the time here in San Diego. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Do you have any questions about it? What's your commission rate? All right. From there, what are you asking for? I'm going to tell you the way that I do it, which has grown my commission, grown my pay. I will tell them that if you have to pay me directly, you'll be capped at 2% of the purchase price. But you also give me the ability to negotiate with the seller, though, for up to 3%. That's how I solved that problem. Out of all of the deals that I have done since October 17th, only one of them has been at 2.5%. All the others have been at 3%. So let's roll this out. How did this play out? We went and looked at four properties. Did the buyer consultation. Comfortable working together? Yes, I am. Send me the buyer broker agreement. You want to walk through it? Nope. Send it. We'll sign it. Great. What's your rate? 2.5%. But you give me the ability to, off, to negotiate for three. Cool, no problem. Went and looked at four homes on Friday. Came back, looked at one home again on Monday. Wrote an offer at $3.6 million with a 3% buyer side commission. We beat multiple offers, $108,000 commission. That's the fruit of everything that I've shown you guys. These skills have led to well over $21 million in sales at this point this year alone. I think we're up to 22 and a half ish right now. And there's still more to come this year. How much money have you guys lost this year before or after the NAR settlement took place without these skills? It's a leaky funnel, leaky bucket. How much money? How many deals? Without these skills, without what I've shown you, the problem, though, is this is only going to get worse in 2025. It's not going to get better. This is not going to magically go away. Buyers are going to become more aware of what they should be asking, what they should be looking for, who they should be talking to. You should be able to get yourself an opportunity to sit down at the table. That's the hardest part. 
but then you need to be able to deliver that value, 30 different buyer value propositions. So here's a very interesting graph. This is an innovation adoption life cycle. Two and a half percent of the agents out there, it's, uh, it's those of us that are innovating right now. It's those of us that are teaching this, that are leading teams with this, that are out implementing this, the ones of us that are getting three plus percent commissions. That's about two and a half percent of the agents. I think they said there's something like 100 million agents in the United States. Then there's going to be early adopters. These are the people that have already started learning this. They've already started perfecting it, or they're about to start. Like you guys and gals that are on this webinar right now at the workshop, you're like, I need to figure this out. Like, I'm going to fill out a little web form, and I want to sit on this workshop and hear what Ryan has to say. This 15%, these are the people who are going to dominate 2025. Absolutely crush the year. There's also an early majority. These are the people who, well, you know, I kind of learned a lot from Ryan. You know, the, the what he showed us was good, and I'm going to implement this. I can do this on my own. And they're going to go do it, and they're going to do well. They're going to do well. They're going to start really, though, having, they're going to learn by probably February or March, like we need to dedicate time to this, or we're going to have a problem. This right here is 50% of the agents. And if you remember back in March of 2024, when the settlement was announced, the projections were that across the country, half of the agents will no longer be in the business by the end of 2025. That's your halfway point right there. These people, the early adopters and the early majority. We have a late majority. These are the people that are going to get to the summer and go, oh no, we've only had one deal. We've only had two deals and... I'm going to go to Starbucks tomorrow, but I'm not going to order a drink. I'm going to ask them to hire me to make people drinks because I've only done one or two deals. Right? I'm not trying to make fun of those people, but these are the people who aren't getting it. You have the laggards. These are the people who are already out of the business, are already on their way out of the business. They will be out of the business by the end of next year. So the question is, where are you going to fall on this scale? Where are you going to fall? Because the reality is if you don't evolve and grow your skills, you're going to go extinct in this business. You're going to go extinct. All right. So when I first started in real estate, I mentioned that we did these buyer broker things from the beginning. So this was 2016. So if you're anything like I was, you're feeling extremely overwhelmed, like you're getting left behind. I know that everybody on the team that I joined had a lot more experience than I did. They were signing, signing buyer broker agreements. They were out killing it. And I'm like, value? value. Ask them if they sat down and explained the home buying process. That was the value I had, right? You had to learn a lot more than that. So I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine that Ryan has this magic wand and the ability to bop you on the head with it and make you an early adopter, to make you in the front half of that innovation adoption life cycle. And I do, because I have a live coaching program from myself personally, a top 1% buyer's agent and probably the toughest market in the United States. I'm going to guide you through, I'm going to come alongside you and guide you through every single thing you will need to go from a new lead to a signed buyer broker agreement to give you some perspective of the entire course. We covered about 20, maybe 25% of it today. Maybe. And in reality, probably a lot less than that. Remember, I said that at one point, I put that slide in there and said to cover all this in depth was nine hours. That was nine coaching sessions to cover that. Nine coaching sessions. We are just under an hour into this right now. Live coaching from someone who is doing it. Not someone who knows the theory, not someone who sits behind a desk and never done a deal. Not somebody who does a few deals and they've declared themselves an expert, but you're going to get in this program two live coaching sessions a week. It's an eight week course over 16 hours of live coaching. We'll personally guide you through how to become a top buyer's agent in your market or markets. This is coming from somebody who is out doing the work. When I get done with a coaching session, I get off of Zoom. And I pick my phone back up and I start getting back on the phone. Right now you have a fishing rod. I know that. I know that you have a hook and you're going to catch a given type of fish. Maybe it's a investment 
an investor you work with, maybe this is a first time buyer, maybe this is a military relocation person and you're the guy or the gal, but that's your one hook. This program is going to teach you how to go from one hook to a net. First time buyer, move up buyer, move down buyer, out of area buyer, relocation buyer, military buyer, VA buyer, buyer who can't get an offer accepted. I'm going to show you how to catch them all. So with this, it's going to accelerate the mastery. It's going to show you exactly how to go from a new lead to a buyer consultation in great detail. The feedback we've gotten on this so far is it is changing people's lives in the way that they are doing business, the amount of appointments they're setting, the amount of agreements they're getting signed, the amount of families that they're helping buy houses, and the amount of money they're being compensated for that, exponentially better. We're going to show you how to ask the right questions and how to accurately gather the pain points. We barely went into that today. That was nine hours worth of, of coaching. Nine hours. A complete list of all 30 plus value propositions for buyers how to determine what they are, how to offer them, what they are, how to explain them. That you gotta deliver in the consultation. All the pre-consultation, the step, the process, the preparations, all the templates. This is, I will give you the exact email template that I send to people. I will show you exactly what I do on a high note presentation. How to conduct a buyer consultation, A to Z. Every single part of it, and we're gonna give you all the collateral. You wanna use the exact same handout that I use, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm going to show you how to get that signed buyer broker agreement that lets you negotiate for 3% every time, not taking 1% because that's all you feel you can offer. This is a very big statement. All the top agents across the country, myself included, this is the biggest opportunity that I have ever had in real estate. Biggest opportunity ever. And I want to make sure that you can take advantage of that also. So that's what the material in this course is going to do. It's exactly why this is the biggest opportunity for you in your lifetime in real estate and show you how to use this to make more money for your family. So where are you going to be in this? Are you going to be an early adopter? Or are you going to be an early majority? Or are you going to be out of the business? The only you can decide that. So here's the deal. If you made it this far, you get the bonus gifts. You got to scan that QR code. Um, this is going to give you the video replay of the Buyer Agent Blueprint Workshop 1.0. This is 2.0. The first one was only value proposition. I think we covered five or six of them. We went into a little more detail. I'm going to give you a copy of the buyer showing system, a copy of the features versus benefits. All right. Book a discovery call. There's no obligation. There's no cost. We don't take everybody into this program. I think at this point, we probably turned away more people than we have in it. Because this is, this is a high-level program. Somebody has to be coachable. They have to be hungry. They have to want to be successful. They have to be willing to commit to coming to the classes, right? This is a higher level thing, guys and gals. So scan this. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's see if it's right for you. If it is, then, then we'll discuss it further. If it isn't, that's okay too, because I want to get you these benefits also. So here's the deal. We got eight spots that we opened up this week, 50% off the normal price, 50% off. Book the call, same QR code right there. We'll get you the bonuses. We'll also get you a free 30 minute deep dive into your business. What do you got going on? What are your problems? And how do you solve them? All you gotta do is scan that QR code. That's all you gotta do.